they've chosen to put their talent at the service of the Principality. This last episode of Monaco Life takes you to meet some of the men and women who make up the ballet, the orchestra and the opera of Monte Carlo, the jewels of the rock. If I want to become a professional ballerina, this was always my dream since I was little. And I think being here is already the first step of my dream. Like Marina, the 43 students of Princess Grace Academy came to Monaco to make their dream come true. Six to eight hours of dance classes a day, six days a week, for five years. Marina, 15, is from Rio de Janeiro. She remembers the shock of her first year at boarding school. It was the first time that I was leaving my family, so it was really a new life for me. And now this, I, I think this is my second home now. A home which is committed to helping its young graduates find the best dance company for their talent to flourish. After completing his degree at the academy, Miki Okato, 18, has just joined the company of the Monte Carlo Ballet. This young Japanese dancer embraces the creations of its director, the prolific dancer-choreographer Jean-Christophe Mayo. When I'm dancing Jean-Christophe's piece, of course it's precise and there's a story, but I don't know, it fits me. So. I feel free. The Monte Carlo Ballet has 50 dancers from 25 different nations. For the past 20 years, Jean-Christophe Mayo has been working on giving the company a specific identity, mixing classical and contemporary dance at the arts crossroads. Jean-Christophe Mayo. Jean Mayo is a creator of such intensity. There is a richness in his choices. He always works with a composer, with a sculptor or a painter, with a writer for the libretto. So he has this taste for the artistic family. He sees the arts as a whole. The mix of genre, the transversal approach of arts, building bridges between disciplines. All this has been a tradition in Monaco for more than a century. It's a profusion of creativity that finds its roots in the early 20th century Salgarnier. It was a big laboratory for the opera and the ballet of the 20th century. They were exceptional times where the arts of dance, music and creations were merging. It was also the case of visual arts with Picasso, who made the stage curtains, and many great artists who were making the scenery and costumes. Today, the Philharmonic Orchestra of Monte Carlo still gives concerts on its own, as well as with dancers and opera singers. Trained by the most talented violinists in France and the US, Lisa Karob plays as concertmaster and lead of the first violins since May 2000. It's genuinely a very eclectic orchestra. It's an orchestra whose musicians come from all over the world, because it's true, I think, that Monaco makes people dream. You just need to say, Orchestra de Monte Carlo, and it means something to people. And when you're lucky enough to be part of such a beautiful orchestra, you must perform as best as you can and enjoy the moment, the magic of the moment. This was the grand finale of our series Monaco Live. You'll find our previous episodes about the sea and about the Monegasques on our website, euronews.com slash live. See you soon on Euronews. A bientôt sur Euronews.